Hey, what's up, everyone? So I wanted to create this video because I did a post in our Road to 100 Countries uh, travel group where I pretty much I brought up and said that the best travel credit card for you. Now, this was completely my opinion, and it was about what is the best travel credit card for the majority not the minority and this is where people especially avid travelers they get they get in a frenzy shall we say avid travelers this particular card is not the best necessarily for an avid traveler now avid travelers are the minority the majority of we'll just go with americans because you know i'm american so i'll just speak on the u.s the average american does not travel we don't travel the world we don't even travel outside of the United States for the most part. So this credit card is for the majority of the people, the people who don't travel, who may want to travel, or the people who only travel once or twice a year and they're looking to travel more. The people who want to get their feet wet, the people who want to have a better understanding. I actually broke it down over here. So in the post, I said people who never travel internationally or beyond Mexico or the Caribbean, but would like to travel more. This is for people who are not flight attendants or work for the travel industry or travel for work. Now, I'm not saying this credit card is not for them, just the post in general, because flight attendants, well, you know, they fly on standby. They fly pretty much for free. Uh, travel industry and people who travel for work, well, you're racking up points and miles because you travel for work. And if you're not racking up points and miles and you travel work, something is wrong with you. Um, people who may not be able to travel often who are just trying to travel, you know, once or twice a year, this card is going to be great for you because I'm going to show you how you can pretty much stay for free at least once a year. Uh, people who have children who, you know, never had the opportunity or time to travel or when they did find the time to travel, they just didn't have the funds. And then people who actually travel a lot, but just never learn how to utilize the travel credit cards. This is a good starter card. This card is a great best credit card for you as a starter card to get your feet wet. And last but not least, I said pretty much people, you know, who follow me and know I'll never steer you in the wrong direction, especially when it comes to travel. Now, the one thing about me is I had to learn pretty much baptism by fire. I learned all on my own. And what I realized is a lot of people, especially even avid travelers, they don't really hustle the system. They don't work the system. I'm from Jersey. I work the system. I know how to find loopholes and this is what I do. I like free stuff and I like luxury. So, you know, I'm balling on a budget is what I like to say. So I'm going to show you how to really utilize this card and why I think it's the best credit card. And I'm not just going to tell you, I'm going to show you facts. So let's first start off with how many Americans are in the United States? So there are approximately 328 0.2 million Americans as of 2019. Now, the population you can see in this link down here, they estimate is going to be about 331 million people for this 2020 uh, U.S. Census that we're going to have coming up. So, 328, we can round it up, 330 million Americans as of 2019. Well, how many of those Americans actually travel internationally, overseas? Well, let's look that up. 37.7 nine in 2019 americans traveled outside of the united states now you scroll down so you can see that number 2019 37.79 million you uh americans traveled overseas it was last year was uh 41.77 or uh 2018 was uh 41.77 now here's the thing 37.79 million or just 38 million we'll round it up 38 million americans that's a lot it is a lot. 38 million is a lot. But you know what is not a lot? It's not a lot in comparison to 330 million. So that's what, roughly 12, 11 and a half, 12 percent. So we're looking at anywhere between 10 and 12 percent of actual Americans who travel outside of the U.S. Now, overseas, traveled overseas, that does include Canada, Mexico and the Caribbean. So if you want to say avid travelers who go beyond Canada, 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 Mexico or the Caribbean, you're probably looking at a roughly 5% of that 10 to 12%. Only about 5, maybe 5 to 7% actually travel, you know, well beyond Canada, Mexico and the Caribbean. 
So we broke that number now. So this card, again, is based on the majority, meaning all these people that don't really travel. Not the 38 million that do. We're looking at even, you know, the others that don't, the almost 300 million that don't. Now, I pull, let's pull up the cards here. So actually, let's, let's pull up the cards that we have. So I said that the Hilton Surpass card was the best card for the majority of people. Now, a lot of people, let's not look at 12 points per dollar at the Hilton purchases because what that is is 12 points per dollar when you use it at Hilton, meaning you're paying for the hotel. My point of showing you these cards is not for you to pay for hotels. My point of showing you this card is how to travel or how to get that hotel for free. Now, gives you six points per dollar on groceries and dining, six points per dollar at gas stations, and then three points per dollar and everything else. And there's an array of other perks and benefits that it offer. We're not going to get into that because I just want to get into the spending part. Now, the comparable cards that some brought up, and just in general, these are the comparable cards. You have your Marriott Bonvoy card. You have your Hyatt credit card. And you have your IAG credit card. Now, the Hilton credit card annual fee is $95. So we need to compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. I'm not going to show you a $450 or $550 annual fee card. We're going to show you cards that are comparable. $95 annual fee. Let's scroll down here. So our Marriott card, $95 annual fee. Hyatt, $95. IHG, a little lower, 89, but that's the comparable card. Scroll down some more. What do they offer? Six points per dollar at the Marriott when you spend it at Marriott. Six points per dollar at Marriott. Again, you're paying for the hotel, so we're not going to use that number. Hyatt, four points per dollar when you what? Spend it at Hyatt. We're not paying for the hotel. We're not going to use that number. Ten points, ten points, five points, pretty much 25 points per dollar when you're platinum status you got to have these statuses for these but it's pretty much 10 points per dollar but what is that for and it's worded here i don't like how they word it on here that's when you again are using it to pay for ihg hotels when you're using it to pay for the hotel itself so those top numbers are irrelevant because that's not what i'm talking about we're talking about what the average american spends on so guess what i pulled up that number as well so the average american these are the top 11, and we're just going to go to three because that's all that matters, top three here. So the average American spends their money on what? Number one is housing. Of course, it's housing. So we're not going to get into that because you can get at least, you know, we can get to the points per dollar on that. And then we have transportation. Now, a lot of people, oh, hey, transportation, that's, that's airlines. Wait, wait, wait. It's not airlines. Look, it's leasing cars. It, Insuring your car, fueling your car, so gas and maintaining it. It's not all about the air airlines. You remember, only 10 to 12 percent actually fly outside of the the U.S. in general. So transportation is number two. Well, guess what number three is? Number three is food, $7,000, 12.6%. So the average American spends the top three, the, the, the number three, is on food. Now, food includes groceries and restaurants so let's put that out there groceries and restaurants so groceries and food right the top the number three the number three that we spend on so if the average american you know over a little uh, almost 300 million that don't travel outside the u.s what do they spend on food it's not these avid travelers they spend a lot of their money on food well now let's break that down now remember hilton is six points per dollar on groceries and dining Marriott is what? Two points per dollar. Hyatt is two points per dollar at restaurants. Grocery stores aren't isn't even in here. But we're just gonna we're just gonna throw it in there. Two points per dollar in restaurants, we're gonna call it all food. You know, just for just for shakes and giggles, right? And then we have IHG, two points per dollar at gas stations, groceries, and restaurants. So two, two, two. Two across the board, and we have Hilton at six. Now, for me, that's a no brainer. Okay, that means Hilton wins. But let's break it down. Let's break it down in a little more detail. I like to give people details. So I have a little spreadsheet here. And people who know me know that I'm a trainer. They know I've been a professor. So I like to deal with spreadsheets and I like to show detail. So I created this spreadsheet for everyone. You have your Hilton Surpass card, 95 annual fee, Marriott, Hyatt, IG. Six points per dollar on groceries and food. Two points per dollar on groceries and food, two and two. Right? I have it where it breaks down and automatically calculates for me. We have six, two, two. 
So let's just go on a high end. Let's say the average uh, family of four or more, they spend about $2,000 a month on groceries and food. This is restaurants. So remember, if you go to a restaurant, eating out, so forth, and groceries. So let's put $2,000 in there. Hit enter. And voila, we have a breakdown here. So if you spent $2,000 a month, this is monthly bills, at six points per dollar, you're going to get 12,000 points a month, right, in Hilton. You're going to get four at Marriott, you're going to get four at Hyatt, and you're going to get four at IHG. So that's 2,000 times two. Remember, it's two points per dollar. 2,000 times six. Well, in three months, that's 36,000. Three months, that's 12 across the board. Six months, that's 72,000. That's 24, 24, 24. 12 months, and we're going to deal with the year at this point. In one year, spending on groceries, you're going to get 144,000 points at Hilton. You're going to get 48,000 across the board for all others, right? Now, we've had people go, well, you know, well, Marriott or IHG, the average hotel is only 5,000 points per night. Is it? Is it really? Is that subjective? Is, does that depend on where you're going? I think it's subjective. I think it depends on where you're traveling to. But, you know, for shits and giggles, again, let's go ahead and throw points per night. So we're just going to go with the, you know, the, the low average, 30,000, 20,000, 15,000, 10, and 5, right? Because, you know, everyone says 5. So look at this. Now, remember, across the board at all the hotels, if you stay five nights, you always get the fifth night free. So always remember that once you have five or more, you get the fifth night free. So let's say on average, a hotel was 30,000 points a night. Well, at the Hilton, and we're going to base on your one year numbers here, one year. So let's say you made about 144,000 points. So 30,000 points a night, that's only going to give you 4.8 nights. Let's just round it up to five. So you get the fifth night free or whatever the case may be, right? Uh, if you if it was 30,000 points a night in Marriott and there are some 30,000 point rooms, just like there are for Hyatt and ISG, it's only going to give you 1.6 night. We'll round it up to two, right? Two nights in comparison to the five here, rounding up. If it was 20,000, seven, 7.2, 2.4. Let's get all the way down to our 5,000 points a night. 5,000 points a night. Well, yes, at Marriott, Hyatt and ISG, remember we're going to round it up. That's 10 nights at least. That's at least 10 nights uh, that you're going to get free. You're actually going to round that up to 2 to 12 because you're going to get, uh, remember, you're going to get one night each free. So that would be 12 nights you can get for free. 12 nights across the board to Marriott. And this is the Marriott, Hyatt, and ISG because, you know, if it's average 5,000 points a night. Well, look at this. What if a Hilton was 5,000 points a night? You're going to get 28.8, we'll round it up, 30 nights, people, 30 nights for free. And, you know, the naysayers will say, well, there's, there's no Hilton that's 5,000 points a night. Are you sure? Are you positive? Well, yeah, I'm sure I looked it up. Let's go look it up here. So I went here and I went to Hilton and I just wanted to see. I looked up Malaysia because I like Malaysia. Would you look at here? I, I did the, my birthday week. Because my birthday is September 11. If you want to throw me some gifts, by all means, go ahead. Look at this. Double tree. 13,000 points a night. Wow. Hilton Garden Inn. 5,000 points a night. 16,000, 10,000, 8,000. Coming soon. 14,000, 15,000, 10,000, 14,000. I don't even see 20. But let's go with the 5,000 points a night. Now, with 5,000 points a night, and this is across the board, people always want to throw that number. Well, what type of hotel room is it? Let's start there. Because remember, you got to compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. Everybody wants, you can't compare a Hilton Garden Inn to a Ritz-Carlton. They're not even in the same category nor the same class. So now, let's just look at this Hilton Garden Inn. Let's look at the hotel itself. It's 5,000 points a night. Would Sheba and I stay at this hotel? I, I'm bougie. You know, Sheba's bougie too. We like nice things or the nicer rooms. Well, I went ahead and I took this room, this hotel, and I looked it up on TripAdvisor. Mm, that lobby looks, that looks a little, that looks kind of nice there for 5,000 points a night. Same room. There it is right here. So 
5,000 points a night. Look at our little chef here ready to cook for you. Now, remember, if you have the Hilton uh, Surpass card, you get gold status, which is free breakfast. Free cook-to-order breakfast. So this little guy here with, you know, his little chef hat on, he's gonna he's prepared to make that omelet for you. Cook the order. Well, let's scroll through and see what these rooms look like. It's 533 pictures. We're not going to go. Oh, pretty nice gym. Washer and dryer on site for you. And let's see what else we have. That's a pretty nice bathroom. Hey, that, that room is pretty decent. If I'm, I mean, you know, no floral comforters. Let's keep going. Oh, sweet. So, yeah, remember, Hilton Garden Inn, and if you have gold status, you get upgraded for free to the suites, if available. I don't know about you, but I, I think I would stay in this room. Has a nice little view of the towers there in Malaysia. That looks like a nice suite to me. For 5,000 points a night, I think I'll take it. So, as you can see here, for Hilton, Surpass card, in your normal spending, you can stay in Malaysia in that room that I just showed you for 30 nights. Rounding it up. And you're actually 36 nights. Because remember, uh, 35 nights, sorry. No, six, I was right. Remember, every fifth night, you, every fifth night, you, um, you get one free. So you're looking at 35, 36 nights. And that hotel that I just showed you for free from just your normal everyday spending at, on groceries and food. This is not on everything else, people. I'm just showing you the number three thing that Americans spend on, and that's groceries and food, our food. So as you can see, that's why I say this card for the average American, the majority this is the best card that's going to give you the bigger bang for your buck. Now, I just wanted to show facts. I'm not saying to my avid travelers that these other cards are not good. I have all four of these cards, people. I am not sponsored by any of these cards. I have the Marriott. I have the Hyatt. I have the ISG. I have Hilton. You want a referral link for any of them? I can send it to you because I have all the cards. I have all the cards because I work the system. I am an avid traveler. I am now an avid traveler, and I work the system to my advantage. So I'm using all cards. I'm learning every system. Also, so I can teach you. So, you know, some people go, well, I don't really like Hilton. No worries. I can show you how to work the Marriott system. Well, I don't like Marriott. No worries. I can show you how to work the Hyatt system and so forth. I can show you any system that is your preference. I'm just telling you what I think the best travel card for the majority is. And, and honestly, it's the Hilton Surpass. Now, if you want to learn more, you can always take our Tricks to Travel course. Now, Tricks to Travel course is only $19.99. It's only $20. Bucks, and it's over. It's 60% off right now. You get one full year access to the course. Plus, you get unlimited access to our new exclusive Tricks to Travel forum follow-up forum. So, this follow-up forum is a group that I've created where I pretty much give you more additional tips. I also answer any questions that you have. So it's more one-on-one -on -one help. We also have our other course takers in there where they can assist you as well. Other course takers that are, you know, they can tell you what they're doing and some of the things. So it's an opportunity to talk to one another and, you know, pass tips and tricks to one another. It's over 50 videos in this course, and it's very, very detailed. Anyone who knows me knows it's a detailed course. I have videos for everything, step by step. So if you're interested, I have the link down below where you can enroll in the course. And if you I don't want to give you 20 bucks, that's fine. I also have the link for the Surpass card if you just want to get started. You want to kind of learn this system. Again, people, I am saying the Surpass card is the best for the majority not the minority. Now, the minority are avid travelers. That's your 10 to 12 percentile. We're not talking about the actually it's like 5 to 7 percent. We're not talking about them. We're talking about people who just, they travel once, twice a year. They want to really get into it. They want to learn the system. They want to just like get their feet wet. You should start off with that card. And that's just going to conclude this video. I just kind of wanted to give some facts, some more information, because... <laughs> I know my avid travels, boy. They, they love to come at my neck. It's not even about you. It's not about you. Everything is not about you. I don't care if you went to 365 countries. We're talking about people who have never been anywhere or they're just looking to, you know, try to get somewhere. 
that's going to conclude the video. All right, everyone. Talk to you later.